Horizon Builders, the TriMesh importing is coming to the platform and today I want to share with you what tools the MetaCrafters team is using to prepare and to transition. And what clever AI tools we use to speed up and improve our workflow. I will talk about two essential PC tools, these work on Macs and PCs. Then I will talk about two essential tablet tools. And then I will talk about tools that let you create TriMesh models with zero modeling skills. And yes, I am talking about generative AI, of course. So what is TriMesh importing? It is the ability to import any 3D object that you would design on your PC or tablet or a phone even. It, it frees us up from the constraints of using the somewhat limited Horizon tools. If you have built anything in Horizon, you know that using the primitives is not ideal. It's fine for the cartoony, low-poly aesthetic and some worlds and games in Horizon really do look very nice. But, well, we want more choices when it comes to the style of builds. We want more refined shapes, and this is very important, we want to be able to import our own textures. TriMesh importing is not just about the 3D models. It is also about designing intricate textures or ability to bring in photos, posters, paintings, or even replicas of real-world objects into Horizon. Once the TriMesh importing is available, really the sky is the limit. When is TriMesh importing coming to all users? Nobody knows. There is no official release date yet, but Horizon and some users have been already testing this feature, so I am suspecting that it's a matter of months or maybe even weeks. Uh, if you are watching this video months after I uploaded it, please check the video description, because once TriMesh is available to everybody, I will make sure to link to a video tutorial with step-by-step -step directions. Val and I have been creating 3D content outside of Horizon Worlds for many years now. Uh, we are very excited that we'll be able to bring some advanced builds into VR. So here are the tools that we plan to use to create Horizon assets and games. Let's start with 3D modeling on a PC. Let's start with Blender. You can install Blender for free on a PC or a Mac. Uh, I am including a link in the description below. Uh, this is what I use for 3D modeling. I do most of the modeling that has to do with creating architecture, furniture, vehicles, objects, weapons, uh, the kind of modeling where you want to be precise and do things efficiently with as few polygons as possible. And Blender is great for that. There are several very capable professional 3D design applications out there, uh, Cinema 4D, Max, Maya and others. I learned 3D modeling some 12-13 years ago using Cinema 4D. There are four main reasons why I eventually transitioned to using Blender, and I'm going to go over them now. Number one, features. This is the most important point. For everything that I have ever needed to do in 3D, Blender got the job done. I never feel like there is an important feature or tool missing that would be holding me back in any way. And actually, the 3D community has been somewhat frustrated with the rate of development of apps like Max or Maya, and pretty much everybody agrees that Blender has been improving very rapidly over the last several years. And speaking of features, I love that sculpting tools are included inside Blender. I can use the traditional modeling tools and switch to sculpting tools anytime I want without leaving the app. Number two, cost. Blender is free. I think Cinema 4D is more than $100 per month these days. Uh, Maya and Max are around $200 a month, I think unless you work with other people or studios that require you to share Cinema 4D files with them, I can't think of a good reason to spend that much money. Number three, support. You will find a ton of Blender tutorials on YouTube. Uh, 
A 3D app is something that you never really finish learning. As you go along, you will find yourself learning new tools or techniques or learning new updated versions of tools. A Blender has been around for a while and a quick YouTube search will produce thousands of tutorials that you can watch for free. Blender is popular. Blender is open source. Blender has a ton of add-ons that people are creating that are either free or quite affordable. Number four, future proofing. We all know that AI is rapidly changing how we create. Because of its large and active user base, Blender is in the best position to take advantage of the upcoming generative AI tools that are coming to the market. A Blender allows people to build and distribute add-ons, which can be used right inside the app. For example, there are already tools which allow you to use Google Maps and extract their 3D models for your own use. This is done without even leaving Blender, just by typing in the coordinates of the world location that you want to use. I imagine that soon we'll have multiple choices of add-ons that are inside Blender that will allow us to describe the 3D model or character that we want created. Blender is great for 3D modeling on a PC, but how about creating textures? Let's talk about Adobe Substance Painter. I use Adobe Substance Painter for creating textures. It is a wonderful program which has many built-in textures to get you started. It isn't just a painting app. The great thing about Substance Painter is that it understands how materials behave. So for example, you can tell it that you want an object to appear worn out and it will recognize that an object would most likely be worn out on the edges and that the dirt would be hiding in the crevices. Or you can tell it that you want a wall to look like water was leaking and staining it, and the program will understand that the gravity would be pulling the water droplets down. This is the idea behind smart materials. This goes far beyond just an app that allows you to paint on a 3D object. Substance Painter is an industry standard software used by game developers and visual effects artists on movies. Unfortunately, Adobe Substance Painter is not free. The Adobe Substance 3D collection, which includes a Substance 3D Modeler, Substance Sampler and Stager, is $50 a month. Yes, it's quite a lot, but it is worth the expense in my opinion. And, and the moment I find a comparable application that does all of this for free, I will be happy to switch. I just haven't found one yet. Between Blender and Substance Painter, you have pretty much all the tools required to create the most advanced models and texture them with the most advanced tools. Both of those tools are designed for a PC use. Now, let's talk about a more mobile workflow. Let's see what you can do on your tablet. Nomad Sculpt. So, while I focus on architecture, furniture, vehicles, and so on, Val focuses on organic shapes. She is the go-to person for sculpting characters, people, animals, creepy dolls for our horror games, uh, organic shapes such as flowers, trees, and so on. She found that a combination of an iPad and an Apple Pencil creates a great uh, environment for that kind of work. Uh, it is very freeing to just grab an iPad when you're sitting on a couch in your living room uh, with a Netflix movie playing in the background, or taking the iPad with you on a trip, or taking it on a porch and breathing the fresh air when working on a design. But the biggest benefit is the tactile feeling of a tablet and a pencil that is the closest that you can get to designing with your hands. Well, I guess you could also design with clay and then scan it, and I wouldn't be surprised if we do that too in some cases. Nomad Sculpt is very capable, and it costs only $15. It is very much worth the price. Nomad is excellent for 3D modeling and it also allows you to do some basic textures. The texture design tools are not very refined yet. 
and that's why it's best to use something more advanced to create textures on the iPad. Val uses Procreate for painting textures. Creating textures is a science and an art. Sometimes you want textures to be as realistic as possible, and sometimes you want them to be abstract and expressive. I really like Adobe's Substance Painter because of their realism, but that program is not really built for expressive artistic kind of texturing. And this is where you need an app where an artist would feel free to be a painter. Val uses Procreate for painting textures because it's a very capable painting tool that is best for somebody with background in painting. And it also allows you to paint directly on a 3D object. Procreate is only $13. It really is a great deal. So, Blender, Adobe Substance Painter, Nomad Sculpt, and Procreate. These four are the essential ones for us. But then there are also other apps that we use for some specific tasks. For example, we used Luma AI to scan my head the other day. We did a quick scan with a phone, cleaned up the topology in Blender, and just like that, I was able to wear my own head as a helmet. Now let's talk about AI tools. Generative AI is here and is changing how we create. What if I told you that this 3D chair asset was generated by AI in just seconds? Let me show you how. I went to the Luma AI Discord and found their Genie project. I typed high back chair, luxurious, leather, burgundy. I was hoping for the matrix look and I got something pretty similar on the first try. Luma AI gave me four options. I liked the first one the most, so I clicked on Refine 1. And just like that, my chair was ready. I brought it into my game, added some physics, and here it is. I have to say I love the detail in this model, check out these worn out edges. It works, it gets the job done, I like the look. We are just scratching the surface of what AI will let us do. I imagine that soon we'll be able to complete designs for objects, characters, or entire game maps just by describing what we want. Uh, stay tuned for tutorials. We'll be posting them here on our YouTube channel. Uh, so make sure that you subscribe.